Hi, I'm Ron Watson, pastor of First Presbyterian Church right here in Ocala, Florida. I'm so glad you could worship with us today. In today's service, here on All Hallows' Eve, we will be celebrating All Saints' Day one day early. We've lost many people uh, during the pandemic, and we will be remembering them by name in this service. Perhaps you have lost someone during this time who is not a member of our church, but important in your life, a family member or friend, and there will be times to offer prayers of thanksgiving for them in this service. We are worshiping God together today and remembering all of the saints. For those of you who maybe have a Roman Catholic background, saints might mean something very different. In our Presbyterian and Reformed heritage, the saints are those who believe in this life, those who have believed before us, who have now gone to glory. We remember the saints this day as we worship God together. Welcome to church. Good morning. Let's be called to worship. See how God loves us. God loves us enough to swallow up death forever. See how Christ loves us. Christ loves us enough to share our loss and grief. See how the Spirit loves us. The Holy Spirit loves us enough to offer us words of hope.
for a prayer of confession of sin. On this day when we are reminded of the great cloud of witnesses who have gone before us, teach us to honor them, but to worship only you. Help us to see the past as past and mistakes and sins as ones that do not bind us. Forgive us for the sins we have committed and point us forward along your path of grace and new life. I invite you to silent prayer. Amen. Our God is a God of comfort and peace. Hear the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Good morning. Today we're celebrating All Saints Day, which is actually tomorrow. Do any of you know anyone who believed in Jesus and died? Can you think about that person? There are lots and lots of Christians who have died, and they're all in heaven right now. In today's Bible story, it talks about some of the people who believed in God and died. It says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. The Bible says that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. All of the Christians who died are watching us. They're looking to see what we will do, and they're cheering us on as we try to live for Jesus. They know that if we believe in Jesus our whole life, we'll be like them someday. We'll die and go to heaven too. Then we'll watch other people just like they're watching us. We celebrate the holiday of All Saints Day tomorrow because we want to remember the example of Christians who died before us. We want to think about all the good things they did and how they lived for Jesus so that we can live for Jesus too. We follow their example so that we can be like them and go to heaven one day. And that's what All Saints Day is all about. Let's pray. Father, thank you for loving us and walking us through this life. Thank you for giving us a path to heaven and help us to remember about all the saints who are watching us. In your name we pray, amen. I do have one quick announcement. There will be no youth group tonight, October 31st, and I look forward to seeing you next week at our normal time. Thank you. And our faith rise up and sing of the great and glorious King. You are strong when you believe in your brokenness complete. Shout to the north and the south.
a church with broken wings Fill this place with songs again Of our God who reigns on high By His grace again we'll fly Shout to the north and the south Sing to the east and the west Our first reading is Ephesians 2, 11 to 22. Listen to St. Paul's wisdom. So then, remember that at one time, you Gentiles by birth called the uncircumcised by those who are called the circumcised, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that. You were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace. In his flesh, he's made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. He's abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances so that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body, through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him, both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you're no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Jesus Christ himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are also built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. Here ends our first reading.
for our prayers today, I want us to remember folks who touched our lives, folks who we still grieve about, a grandparent, a parent, a spouse, children, best friends. In our grief, let's go in prayer to the God of hope. Let's pray. Lord God, we praise you and thank you. We thank you for sending your Son to be our Savior, your Son, Jesus, who lived among us, who made friends with the disciples, who healed and taught, who did nothing wrong, who was utterly without sin, and yet uh, evil men condemned him to death and the Romans executed him, and you grieved. On Good Friday, the world turned dark, and the, temp the curtain of the temple was torn in two. And you grieved, O oh Lord, the death of your son. We pray to you, who knows the pain of death and loss, even though you are the omnipotent creator of the world. We're grateful that you are vulnerable, that you love, that you expose yourself to the pain of love, because we do too. We love and sometimes lose. So hear our prayers as we pray for one another. We pray for folks who grieve. And we remember uh, our friends and even ourselves who grieve this day. Lord, hear our silent prayers. Lord, we remember also folks that we have loved who have died this year or, or during COVID, uh, the last 18 months, or in the past. Lord, we, we pray, giving thanks for people we've loved, and we remember now silently the names of people who have touched our lives. Lord God, send healing. Send healing and growth that we may uh, grow beyond the pain that we feel. We pray for our nation, for so many grieve friends, family, folks we know, and strangers. We pray for our nation. We pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for your support of our ministry here at First Presbyterian Church. There are three ways to give. You may always uh, come by the church from 9 to 4, Monday through Thursday, of course, also on Sundays. You may use the church mail slot after hours, or you may go to fpcocala.org and click on Give. Let us pray. Eternal and gracious God, we are so thankful for this church and for all the ministry that it is involved in. Thank you for making us a part of it and make us good stewards of your gifts, that what we do with what you have given us will spread the word, the love, and the justice of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Our epistle lesson today is from Hebrews, chapter 11, verses 32 through 12, 2. Hear the word of God. And what more should I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. 
Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging, and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sawn in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains, and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all these, though they were commanded for their yet all these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had promised something better, so that they would not, without us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Shall we gather at the river Where bright angel feet have to run With its crystal tide forever Flowing by the throne of God Yes, we'll The saints of the faith. <laughs> Maybe you've heard the expression before, I'm no saint. These are words spoken by a person who has not been venerated by the Roman Catholic Church and feels, probably rightly so, that they never will be. But for us, us Reformed Christians, even the former Catholics, especially you, you former Roman Catholics, you are to us in this church the saints of God. You are all believers, and faith, just like the faith that made the blind man well in our lesson from two weeks ago. Your faith makes you well. 
and a saint. Everyone who trusts in Christ watching this broadcast, even those who have such faith, are saints of God. Faith alone makes you a saint. Now the saints are everyone with such faith, living and dead. And we are connected. Perhaps you'll remember the last verse of an old hymn, the church is one foundation maybe you don't know it but you know these hymns are always kind of beautiful and have such nice rhymes the church has union with god the three in one and mystic mystic sweet communion with those whose rest is one <laughs> mysticism is something we probably like to leave out of the decent and orderly presbyterian church it doesn't seem very presbyterian but it is present today as we remember the saints We'll experience it again next week when we celebrate the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. It is present today in our love for Christ and in the love we share as members of his mystical body, the church. And that church is bigger than any building, bigger than any denomination, bigger than all the churches on earth combined. That church contains all the people who are a part of Christ alive today and all who have gone before us still in the same church. Today the nation celebrates Halloween, and today our church celebrates tomorrow, All Saints Day, one day early. I think it's ironic that America, I think it is ironic that in America, some denominations and churches would like to do away with what is truly a Christian holiday, Halloween, or All Hallows' Eve, if you prefer. Because All Saints Day was so important in uh, centuries past in the church, the night before its eve, like Christmas Eve, was celebrated in the church for centuries. Perhaps the holiday has lost some of its meaning as people dress in costumes that perhaps some might deem unholy. But it is a celebration of those who have finished the good fight in this life and in death have crossed from one section of the church to the other. I would like to take a few moments this morning to talk about our book of confessions. It's a very thick book. We know the Apostles' Creed is in there, and but there's a lot else that's in there. This first quote is from the second Helvetic Confession. The church is divided into different parts or forms, not because it's divided or <laughs> rent asunder in itself, but rather because it is distinguished by the diversity of the numbers in it. But the one church is called the Church Militant, that's here, and the other the Church Triumphant, in heaven. The former still wages war on earth and fights against the flesh, the world, and the prince of this world, the devil, against sin and death. But the latter, having now been discharged, triumphs in heaven, immediately after having overcome all those things, and rejoices before the Lord. Both have fellowship and union, one with the other. We are one church, not two. But we are one church with two parts. And those parts, although they seem divided at times, are quite connected. Today we celebrate our connection with each other and with Christ. We should not rob ourselves of the opportunity of remembering the saints that have gone before us. Those who by their faith have led us to our own faith in Christ can begin with Father Abraham, go through the history of Israel, through Jesus Christ, who is called the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, through his apostles. And for Western Christianity, that's this side of the world, through the Roman Catholic tradition, we know, remember people like John Calvin, Martin Luther, Ulrich Zwingli, John Knox, John Witherspoon, and then through our ancestors that brought us here to Ocala, where we worship virtually or in person, ancestors like Reverend W.J. McCormick and the first congregants of First Church Ocala, the Becketts, the Kappelmans, Duncan Allred, and his sister Elizabeth. Thanks to Tom Weaver for letting me borrow his history book. And if you didn't grow up here, you know those people who helped bring you to your own faith, perhaps including your parents. Maybe not, but someone. A teacher, a friend, someone certainly. We are connected to these saints. And this connection demands celebration. 
For we celebrate the peace we share in Christ, the church membership we share in the household of God, and the love we share which transcends the bonds of heaven and earth. The peace of Christ is shared with the saints through the power of the Holy Spirit. Think back, if you will, on maybe some unpleasant times in your life or memories. Remember those difficult, impossible times and how you got through them. Probably with the peace of Christ. It is in those most desperate times that we wish we could have an out-of-body of experience and get away from the hurt, the loss, the desperation, and just be with Christ. The good news for us today, friends, is that we don't have to go out of our bodies or out of this world to experience the presence of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus is calling, as the immortal Hank Williams put it. I used to listen to Hank Williams' records when I was little that my father liked. When your soul is weary and it seems you've lost your way, Jesus is calling, calling, night and day. When you need a friend to go with you, all the way. And you'll hear him if you just pray. Calling for you, don't turn away. If you're lost in sin, there's no need for you to stay. If the night is dark, you will soon see the day. Jesus is calling. Night and day. Hank Williams was right. Jesus is available to us in good times and bad times. In times of quiet desperation, in times of loneliness and despair, in times of physical pain. Jesus is calling us, waiting for us to let him into our lives so he can share his peace with us and we can share it with each other. I'm going to share something else with you, by the way. Uh, this time from what's called the Westminster Confession. It's in our book of confessions. The Catholic or Universal Church, which is invisible, consists of the whole number of the elect that have been, are, or shall be gathered into one under Christ, the head of the church. Christ has given the ministry and the oracles and ordinance of God for the gathering and the perfecting of the saints in this life to the end of the world. All saints being united to Jesus Christ, their head, by his spirit and by faith, have fellowship with him and his graces, sufferings, death, resurrection, and glory, and being united to one another in love, they have communion in each other's gifts and graces. This is what Halloween and All Saints Day celebrates, that we are in communion with the saints, living and dead, that we are together at one table, bound together by the love that we share in Christ. And that's a little spooky, I'll admit. I wonder Halloween got sidetracked on ghosts and goblins. To think that when we consume the elements of the bread and the cup, as we will next Sunday, we share that with Christ as the love of God is shared, Father, Son, and Spirit. But we share it with all who love Christ, who are in heaven and on earth. And it's a little weird. But it is also a joyous comfort to know that those people that we love so much who've gone before us in the next life are they're still very much alive and with us, mystically, in Christ. One more thing about the love of Christ should be mentioned. Love, Christ's love can't be contained. Christ's love is that powerful. It is available, abundant, and transcendent. And it fills his one church in both its forms, the militant and triumphant. Listen to the words of Paul again. So you're no longer strangers and aliens, but you're citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Jesus Christ himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. Those words remind us of some other important words of Paul. You probably remember them to the Romans when he says, I'm convinced neither death 
life, angels, rulers, things now or things that are going to come, powers, height or depth, anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And Christ's love, which knows no bounds, will keep us together. The church is alive in heaven and on earth. We share Christ's peace. We share a bond. We share Christ's love. Let us remember the saints that we love. Let us continue to be inspired by their faith. And let us also remember that love puts us together forever. Amen. Today we commemorate the saints of First Presbyterian Church in Ocala, Florida, who have gone before us. We have not been able to mourn many of them during this pandemic. So we take this special time here on All Hallows' Eve to remember their lives and their great faith. Let us remember their names. Jerry Murphy, Sally Williams, Janice Schaefer, Jim Giles, Dolores Shotwell, Jane Smith, Jack Shepard, David Cook, Lou Ann Bainbridge, Marilyn Alsop, Howard Tucker, Jane Gear, Joe Simmons, Marcia Nepp, Randy Freezy, Dick Hancock, George Smith, Joyce Heaney, Bill Bowen, Hank Fleming, Marty Smith, Ellen Drummond, Dorothy Siemens, Creature Lewis, Marilyn Tucker, Jean Morse, Marinelle Fleming, Thomas Michael. We rejoice and give thanks for those who have shared their faith and made our church strong with their witness to Jesus Christ. We remember them this day with all love and all sincerity and honoring their names. Gracious God, we give thanks for these saints and the way they shared their faith and love in Jesus Christ in whom we live and move and have our being. Amen. Today we will affirm our faith in a different way with one of our confessions, this one being the second Helvetic Confession, which speaks about the saints. We believe and teach that God is one in essence or nature, subsisting in himself, all-sufficient in himself, invisible, incorporeal, immense, eternal, creator of all things, both visible and invisible. We believe and teach that the same immense one and indivisible God is in person, inseparably and without confusion, distinguished as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We acknowledge the saints of God to be living members of Christ and friends of God who have gloriously overcome the flesh and the world. We love them as brothers and sisters and also honor them, yet not with any kind of worship, but by an honorable opinion of them and just praises of them. We also imitate them. For with ardent longings and supplications, we earnestly desire to be imitators of their faith and virtues, to share eternal salvation with them, to dwell eternally with them in the presence of God, and to rejoice with them in Christ. Amen.
may the peace which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds of the knowledge of the love of God and of his Son, Christ Jesus. And may the blessings of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be yours now and forever. Amen. Go in peace.